Hello, Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to my lecture video channel. Today we are going to study AMCAT Biology, chapter number three, which is going to be the cell. You are studying about cells since childhood, so I'm not going to define it in detail. As we all know, it is a basic unit of life. So, who actually discovered this cell? I have to remind this for to you that. Robert Hooke discovered the cell and Robert Brown discovered the nucleus present inside the cell. Scleden and Sean further discovered the membrane bounded organelles uh, which are the small uh, mechan mechanical or useful we can say if, if, take, if we take an example of our body uh, this is our body and inside the body we have organs likewise a single cell is very functional that it act as a body and inside it we have many organs known as organelles and the fluid inside the cell which we call cytoplasm was also discovered by Scleden and Sean a baby boy contained 2 trillion cells and an adult have 60 trillion cells in its body and it can be useful for MCQs. Scleden and Sean proposed the cell theory in which they added two points while the number third point is being added by Rudolf Virchow. And uh, the cell theory states that point number one, all organisms are composed of one or more cells. Any living organism which you see on the planet is composed of cells. It can be one cell, it can be more than one. Point number two, the cell is a structural and functional unit of life. It is a structural. It means uh, if we talk about structure, then structure is also formed by the cell. And if we talk about the function, then the function is also formed by cells. Point number three, which was uh, added by Rudolf Virchow, who added that it can only arise from pre-existing cells and it is not a de novo structure which means it cannot arise from non-cellular material. Uh, de novo are the structures uh, which can arise from a it's not uh, uh, they are not materials actually it's a concept it's a concept that living things can arise from non-living material but uh, Rudolf Virchow over here uh, is trying to explain us that pre-existing cells can only be formed by living organism they cannot be formed by non-living material microscope basically microscopes were invented by David Jensen after that uh, some designing and uh, making it properly uh, was done by Galileo who added some more uh, detailing and to look better and made some ease to be uh, used by common people or not at that time common people may not use microscope but uh, it would uh, he made it easier to use for scientists and it he designed a machine on his concept which was invented by David Jensen and now we have in this era we have three types of microscope number one light microscope the microscope which uses light for the illumination and after that we have x-ray microscope the x-ray microscope are microscope which are short wavelengths which uses short wavelengths of x-ray and as a form of illumination as you know in a microscope you need light to have a look at the object so uh, there are different types of light on the basis of the uh, element used as illumination we have divided microscopes into three classification number three classification is going to be electron microscope which uses electron beam as a source of illumination so these are the different types of microscope while compound microscope is still a uh, microscope and being used in our universities or uh, it is now being used by common people as well so it's it has become more common and it is still being used 
at first we were discussing about the cell then why we came to another topic which is microscope because in order to view a cell you need microscope the invention of cell done with the help of microscope because it is a microscopic structure which cannot be seen through uh, our bare eyes or naked eyes okay yeah now we have another uh, two important things which are resolution and magnification magnification is the increasing size of object in image so uh, if we say if we if someone asks you that what is the function of microscope microscope enhances or increases or magnifies the object let's talk about resolution resolution is the minimum resolved distance distance between two particles inside the uh, image the final image it's kind of complicated but just bear with it now let's get back to the cell we have two types of cell prokaryotes and eukaryotes eukaryotes are those organism having a true nucleus the true nucleus which means that it has an other small body inside a bigger body got it in their cells and they also contain chromosomes and a variety of membrane bounded organelles like mitochondria golgi apparatus lysosomes plastids what are organelles as i told you a body a human body take an example of a human body and inside a human body we have organs similarly cell is a body and inside a cell we have small organs which are known as organelles and they are named as mitochondria responsible for producing atp golgi apparatus responsible for producing protein uh, lysosome responsible uh, to uh we can say a uh, microorganism it kills microorganism inside the cell and plastids i don't remember but uh, they are also an organelle uh, which gives maybe green pigmentation so these these are some of the examples of the uh, organelles of cell and if we talk about prokaryotes and then the basic difference between prokaryotes and eukaryotes is that prokaryotes do not contain nucleus and uh, uh, then we have what what do we have in the nucleus in the nucleus we have the genetic material which is dna so where we are going uh, which is dna and chromosomes so we are where we are going to have the dna and chromosomes in the prokaryotes so in the prokaryotes their nucleic material is usually coiled and concentrated in a region of the cell known as nucleoid so if we talk about explain it a bit more uh, have a look at that we have cytoplasm and cytoplasm have a portion where we have the uh, coil and concentrated region and this region contain the nucleic material which is dna and rna and this portion is going to be named as nucleoid instead of nucleus because nucleus is membrane bounded and nucleoid is not membrane bounded it is just the portion where it stays for example a room so room is not a membrane bounded okay so moreover genetic material never associated with histone protein and hence no true chromosomes we don't have any true chromosomes inside the prokaryotic cell because uh, as we know the dna and genetic material is formed by a protein commonly known as histone a nuclear material of prokaryote is not made up of histone so uh, we consider it as a uh, true not a true chromosome so it do not have true nucleus it also don't have a true chromosome as you know all about the organelles you have uh, like mitochondria and golgi apparatus and even you may remember from your previous classes that uh, these organelles have certain functions like i told you mitochondria forms atp so how does scientists know about a very small organ uh, organelle of a microscopic cell so for that 
for if if I say uh, to tell you about how they discovered the function of mitochondria I have to uh, explain a technique which is in our included in our course and this is a technique of isolation of components of cell which means the organelles of cells or cytoplasm of cells everything within a cell is going to be isolated and studied differently the method used for isolating cell organelles or compound is known as cell fractionation uh, so this uh, process is termed as fractionation cell fractionation and this process in this process we have if we I'm just trying to make you uh, assume what's going on over there uh, there is a machine having a tube in the tube we have some we have put the cell uh, which we are going to fractionate and that machine or that tube is going to spin at a certain speed and different speeds are going to make different organelles settle down so the organelles settle Stop down in the container is going to be separated from the uh, organelles up in the air or we can say up in the liquid just like salt in the water if you put on salt in the water it will go deep down uh, another better example is sand in the water if there is sand in the water and you are spinning the sand spinning the water it will disperse sometimes and if you keep it over there and leave it for some minutes the sand will uh, stand in the sand will go into the bottom of the container but over here it's kind of different that uh, a certain speed like 3 or uh, 30 rp or 3 rp or 4 rp whatever it is rpm sorry not rp rpm uh, revolution per minute the speed of the spin will decide which organelle has to go down at different speed different organelles come down because every organelle have different weight and then the sample is taken to the lab and tested that what every different organelle is performing and this is how we got to know that mitochondria is making ATP.